Mahaba, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Doc Is In, where Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi's expert physicians and dedicated caregivers converge to explore the dynamic intersection of technology, compassionate care, and cutting edge research that help deliver the best patient care outcomes. My name is Derek Keddington, and I'll be your host for today's episode, brought to you by the Fatima bin Mubarak Center here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Before we dive in, remember to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button as we're here to make the doc is in the number one destination for healthcare podcasts. So whether you're about to buckle up for a drive, getting ready for a run, or warm up a cup of coffee, join us now as the doc is in. Here with me for today's episode is Dr. Samir El Casey. Dr. El Casey is the chairman for the Department of Endocrinology at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. He completed his residency, sorry, his medical training um, at Flinder in Australia, where he received his doctor of medicine from Flinders University, and then completed his internal medicine residency at Flinders Medical Center, and then an endocrinology fellowship at Barwan Health. Did I say that right? Correct, yes. Um, and he spent time working as endocrinologist in Australia and then in Saudi, um, Saudi Arabia, before joining Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi as a consultant physician in 2011. Oh, sorry. 2014. 2014. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's great to have you with us again, Dr. Samer. Thank you so much, Derek, for the introduction. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. So for those that may have missed our first episode a couple weeks ago, um, Dr. El Casey came back in December um, and had a conversation with us about thyroid cancer. Um, and it was a great conversation. We're excited today to continue that conversation um, and a little bit more of a, uh, a smaller focus, I guess, as we talk about uh, medullary uh, thyroid cancer. Yeah. Um, so if you could give us a little bit of a description of how does that differ from other types of thyroid cancer? Yeah, definitely, uh, Derek. So, uh, so the name is a little bit hard to pronounce, but uh, uh, the way I pronounce it, it's medullary, medullary thyroid cancer. And it's a relatively uh, less common, it's a much less common uh, form of thyroid cancer okay. uh, compared to the types that we spoke about uh, previously. Uh, the papillary and the follicular thyroid cancers. So, so medullary thyroid cancer makes up around uh, around one to two percent of all thyroid cancers. Okay. Uh, so it's much less common. Uh, it comes from the thyroid gland, and it comes from what we call the the C cells in the in the thyroid gland. Uh, so these are specialized uh, cells, and they produce a uh, a hormone uh, known as calcitonin that we can actually measure when these uh, tumors uh, are, uh, are actually uh, uh, diagnosed. Okay, yeah. so what are some of the, the signs and symptoms of this cancer maybe versus the other uh, thyroid cancer types? Are they similar, are they different? Uh, yeah, uh, not, not too much in terms of uh, differences, uh, but there are, there are some differences. Uh, so uh, just like all cancers, uh, patients may initially notice a lump in the neck uh, sometimes they may even feel a lymph node, which is uh, on, the, on the side of the, of the thyroid. So the thyroid is right at the base of the neck, and it, they might feel a lump in, in the thyroid, especially when they swallow. They can, they can see the, uh, uh, the lump moving up and down. So this, okay. is, uh, this is usually in the thyroid. And if it's in the lymph node, it usually tends to be uh, on the side of the neck, uh, either side of the neck. And typically, this doesn't move with, uh, with uh, swallowing. So, so this could be the initial presentation, a lump uh, in the neck, uh, and other potential symptoms could be difficulty with uh, swallowing or uh, sometimes a change in voice. Uh, occasionally we see that. Not very common, but we do see that occasionally. Um, and, and just to mention, again, not, not very common, but these tumors can sometimes produce, uh, uh, so the hormone can actually produce symptoms. So some patients pre present with flushing and diarrhea. Uh, uh, not very common, but yes, this can be a presenting symptom as well. Okay, and is that different than um, the other types of thyroid cancer? Yeah, so the other, the other types of thyroid cancer, they typically present with the, with the lump and sometimes with the, with the pressure symptoms in the neck, uh, but uh, they don't actually produce any flushing or diarrhea. Um, uh, so similar, but not exactly the same, yeah. Great. Um, so how are, you know, if I have these signs or symptoms and I come to present to you or to another endocrinologist, 
What does the diagnostic process look like for this disease? Uh, yes, so it's, it's actually very similar to, uh, to any thyroid uh, tumor or any thyroid uh, lump that we, that we expect. Uh, so initially we start with an ultrasound and an ultrasound uh, will give us a very clear idea of the, of the location, the size, and the character of the thyroid nodule, and also whether or not there are any affected lymph nodes. Uh, depending on what we find with ultrasound and depending on the degree of suspicion, then we proceed with a biopsy. Uh, and typically this is a fine needle aspirate biopsy uh, done in the clinic under local anesthesia. Uh, where we aspirate uh, cells from the thyroid nodule, and if there are any enlarged lymph nodes or abnormal-looking lymph nodes, we can aspirate those as well. Okay. And that, that biopsy is something that you can go home the same day, right? It's just a clinic, almost like just an outpatient clinic visit? It is, yeah. It's a, it's a day procedure, and it, it takes typically uh, you know, about 30 minutes uh, under local anesthesia, and uh, yeah, patients can go home the same day. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so... How does the what's the treatment like for for this type of thyroid cancer? Is it does it vary a lot from the other two types we talked about last time, or is it similar? Uh, so the treatment is very similar, uh, but there are some differences. So so initially uh, we start with surgery, and for this type of uh, for this type of tumor in particular, we don't usually discuss doing. Uh, partial thyroidectomy like the other tumors. If they're small and in the thyroid, we usually just do away with just uh, hemithyroidectomy or, mm -hmm. or half of the thyroid. Yeah. In, this, in this type of tumor, and because of the risk of recurrence, we uh, typically go directly for a total thyroidectomy. So we remove the thyroid completely. Uh, and if there are any enlarged lymph nodes, the surgeon will remove those at the same time as well. Uh, typically what happens before surgery is that the patient will undergo additional investigations and quite often they might have uh, CT scans of the neck, uh, the chest, uh, and they may even have uh, further investigations to make sure that they don't have any other, uh, uh, any other hormonal imbalances, which we will discuss later on during this episode. Right. Well, that's, that's helpful to understand because I know one of the things that um, we look at is is a, in the thyroid program is, you know, what percent of our patients are getting hemithyroidectomies and, and total thyroidectomies. So it's, it's interesting to learn that with this disease that we generally do the total thyroidectomy to try it. Is it because it's more aggressive or more recurrent or? Uh, it is, I mean, it is, it is actually uh, slightly more, uh, I would say more aggressive than the regular uh, thyroid cancer that we discussed last time. Uh, most patients tend to present uh, later uh, so by the time, at the time presentation, more than half of the patients already have lymph node involvement, and a small number of patients have uh, extension into other organs in the body. Uh, so typically, what we do at the time of diagnosis is that we like to to do some uh, axial imaging, uh, the neck, the chest, and and other organs, uh, and and this will also help the surgeon prepare for the operation and decide exactly the extent of surgery. Is it going to be just the thyroid? Is it going to be thyroid and lymph nodes? And to what extent? Uh, so preparation for surgery is very, very important here. Great. So that, I guess that leads me to my next question around early detection. Um, can you talk a little bit about why it's so important for people to come in and if they have suspicious nodules or lumps and um, for that early detection, especially related to this Type of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a that's a very important point. And with with medullary thyroid cancer, it can be familial or hereditary in about a quarter of the cases. So 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 that means three quarters of the cases don't have any family history of medullary thyroid cancer. Uh, but a quarter of the patients have uh, have a family history, uh, and. Uh, and, and when, when this is the case, we encourage patients who have, who have a family history to come forward uh, for, for a checkup and to make sure that they don't have any, any lumps in the neck and so forth. Um, for, the, for the remaining majority of patients who don't have a family history, uh, once a thyroid nodule is diagnosed, uh, then I think we should go through the regular process, examine the thyroid nodule uh, thoroughly on ultrasound, 
and then decide whether or not it needs to be biopsied. Uh, but early detection allows us, if you like, to uh, allows us to target uh, the treatment uh, to the disease in that uh, in that we we don't do we don't go overboard with with surgery uh, at the time uh, when when the patient presents. Great. So you, you made the point to talk about family history and genetics and in its role and um, how I guess is there a genetic test that can be run to determine whether I'm at risk for this cancer or is it more just based on family history? Yes, it is. I mean, I mean, we we initially go through family history and uh, we do a genetic test, which is the uh, RET, R E T. So that's a uh, a genetic test that we check for, uh, and we can do two types of uh, tests. Initially, we do a blood test uh, to see if if the patient has a hereditary component, uh, and if the blood test is negative, then we could examine the uh, after the thyroid after we remove the thyroid, we can examine the thyroid tissue for that mutation to see if if this is like just a sporadic uh, malignancy which occurred in that particular individual with no family history. Uh, but the presence of this uh, mutation is very important because it uh, it has implications for treatment. Uh, as we will discuss in a minute, that we do have now specific treatments for, for these mutations. So that does help. So what, thank you for explaining that to me. So what are some of the potential risk factors? We talked about family history being one, but for developing um, medullary, did I say that right this time? Medullary, yes. Medullary thyroid cancer. What are some of the risk factors? Uh, I mean, really, it's just the uh, genetic uh, f uh, component that uh, that plays the r the highest uh, risk factor here. Um, we know in general that uh, radiation to the head and neck area can increase the risk of malignancy, but for this particular uh, tumor, medullary thyroid cancer, it's the presence of a family history. And, and after that, I guess whether or not there's that specific mutation within the tumor cells. Uh, so these are potentially the two risk factors. Great, thank you. Um, and you've made reference a little bit, just barely around different treatments that have come. Um, so can you just spend a little bit of time talking about any promising new treatments or clinical trials around uh, this yeah, type sure. of cancer? Yeah, definitely. So. So, so this particular uh, tumor, I mean, the primary treatment modality is still surgery. Uh, and unlike the other types of tumors where we discussed radioactive iodine, C cells do not actually take up radioactive iodine, so we cannot use radioactive iodine for these, for these uh, tumors. Uh, we do now have uh, what we call uh, kinase inhibitors, protein kinase inhibitors, uh, and there are, and there are uh, specific kinase that are directed against the, the red mutation. So that's why it's very important to see if these tumors harbor these mutations, because then we can give targeted therapy. Having said that, the majority of patients actually are treated with surgery, and they manage quite well with surgery. It's only after surgery if we find that uh, there's progression or the disease is actually not well controlled that we start thinking about these treatments. And uh, I, I often hear patients talking about these medications as uh, the smart pill, which is a very nice description. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Why, why would it be called the smart pill? Uh, I guess because it does uh, target that specific, uh, it, it's targeting the mutation within the cell, uh, or that uh, the tumor cell. So it's actually a very specific uh, treatment for a for for the tumor, uh, and uh, the uh, the idea of it and the concept is is very very clever. And I guess that's where the you know, the word smart pill comes from. Oh, that, it's neat to see how far medicines come in the last couple of decades. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, definitely, if, you know, a few or a few years ago, we did not have these options. So definitely, this is a huge advance in medicine, yeah. So you made reference that surgery is the primary treatment, and then after surgery, there's some follow-up that's required. And I'm assuming you're monitoring these patients as they're on these medications and, and different drugs. Can you talk a little bit about the, like, why is it it's so important for people to follow up? Because to my mind, you know, thyroid cancer has such a great survival rate which is fantastic, but there's gotta be some surveillance or something to do follow-up that I, as a patient, would need to, 
to be willing to do in order to make sure that I stay on top of my disease. Yeah, yeah. So, so with thyroid cancer, follow-up is very important because uh, recurrence can happen at any time. I mean, definitely it's more likely to occur in the first few years after surgery. And we estimate the risk of recurrence based on the initial presentation and the extent of the, of the tumor at the time of surgery. Uh, but even in patients who are uh, initially after surgery, uh, if you like, free of any disease and everything is well controlled, uh, recurrence can still occur. Definitely it's going to be much less as we move away from the date of surgery, but nevertheless it can still occur uh, many, many years after surgery. And that's why it is important to maintain follow-up. And, uh, and during follow-up what we typically do is we, we examine the neck, we may get an ultrasound occasionally, and we monitor the, uh, the hormones that these tumors produce. As we discussed, one of the hormones is calcitonin, so we, we can check that in the blood and see if it, is, if it is well controlled or if it's rising. So that will guide our follow-up process. So definitely my, my advice to patients is to maintain follow-up, even if it is after many years of, of uh, thyroid surgery, uh, and uh, just to make sure that everything is still clear and, and there's no recurrence. Great, thank you. Um, those were all the questions I had for you, but is there anything else you'd like to you know, talk to our audience about related to uh, this type of thyroid cancer? Yes, yeah, so I've, got, I've got two quick points for the, for the audience. Uh, the first one, I often get asked, uh, is there a specific diet that I should be following if, I, if I'm diagnosed with medullary thyroid cancer? And the answer is, is not really. I mean, uh, we want people to be on a, on a healthy diet uh, and to exercise, and uh, uh, there's, there's no specific diet that they, they should follow. It's just you know, a healthy diet and regular exercise. Uh, the, the second question that we're often asked uh, is about the weight loss medications, like, uh, and also uh, diabetes medications like uh, Ozempic and Monjaro, which are commonly used now in the UAE. And these medications are actually contraindicated in patients who have these tumors or even have a family history of these tumors. Uh, so it's very important uh, uh, to be aware of this, uh, of this information if you are planning to be on any weight loss medication. Yeah, it's very helpful. Two very important facts for our, for our listeners today. Mm. Um, well, thank you for joining us again on another episode of The Doc Is In. It's always good to sit and talk with you. Um, mm -hmm. And if any of our patients have any family members or themselves or any of our audience um, have any concerns around thyroid cancer or any um, issues related to that, have a strong family history of thyroid cancer, feel free to reach out to us, um, give us a call, or go to Cleveland Clinic um, Abu Dhabi.ae to schedule an appointment. Um, but thank you again, Dr. L. Casey, for coming with us today. Um, and for our audience, we hope you um, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, Derek. Thanks so much.